Conseil national pour la sauvegarde de la patrie et le gouvernement du Niger rappellent les liens ancestraux qui lient le peuple du Niger au peuple frère du Bénin, avec lequel nous avons les mêmes populations et les intérêts communs. Ce lien devenu institutionnel a facilité la signature d'un accord de coopération militaire entre nos deux pays. Toutefois, ce pays, face à la situation sécuritaire, politique et économique, a décidé d'envisager une agression contre le Niger au lieu de le soutenir. En effet, la République du Bénin a autorisé le stationnement de militaires mercenaires et matériel de guerre dans la perspective d'une agression voulue par la France en collaboration avec certains pays de la CDAO contre notre pays. Le Conseil national pour la sauvegarde de la patrie et le gouvernement du Niger réitèrent leur volonté d'éviter l'escalade et après avoir appelé à plusieurs reprises le respect des obligations du dit accord, décide de dénoncer l'accord de coopération militaire du 11 juillet 2022 conformément à son article 23 et au préavis de CIP. So this story just broke and the, I want us to get to it right away. So the headline reads, Niger cuts military ties with Benin on opposition to July 26th coup. That Niger has realized that Benin is not in support of them and they have decided to cut off all military ties with Benin. Benin thinks that the coup in Niger is not justified, so they won't support the Nigerian military junta. So let's read through the article and see what it says. Niger's junta, which sees power in a coup on July 26, has announced the termination of its military cooperation with its neighbor, Benin, accusing it of supporting a possible West African intervention to restore democracy in the country. The junta spokesman said in a statement broadcast on state television on Tuesday night that Benin has authorized the deployment of troops and military equipment as part of the preparation for an intervention by the Economic Community of West African State. ECOWAS, a regional bloc of 15 countries, including Niger and Benin, has condemned the coup and imposed sanctions on the junta and its supporters. ECOWAS has also demanded the immediate release of President Mohamed Mbazoum and the restoration of constitutional order. ECOWAS has said that it is ready to use force, if necessary, to achieve these goals. The junta, which calls itself the Supreme Council for the Restoration of Democracy, said that it carried out the coup to serve the country from insecurity and corruption. The junta said that it plans to organize a national dialogue and a transition to civilian rule within three years. The junta also accused Benin of betraying Niger and considering an attack against it. The junta said that it has decided to suspend all military cooperation agreements with Benin, including joint patrols, training, and intelligence sharing. The junta said that it will defend Niger's sovereignty and territorial integrity against any aggression. Niger is one of the poorest and most unstable countries in the world, facing multiple challenges such as poverty, hunger, climate change, terrorism, and human trafficking. I wonder how did all this came to be, you know. Niger is unstable. Niger is the poorest country. But you know that Niger is the fifth largest uranium producer in the whole world, and Niger has gold, Niger has a lot of resources, and even though people sit there or people classify them as the poorest country or one of the poorest countries in the world, they still have a lot of resources. So ask yourself, if the leaders in Niger 
we're doing great for the people of Niger, will the Nigerian still be the poorest people in the world? If the leaders came in and did what they were supposed to do and not just embezzle and disregarded or neglected the people, will Nigerians still be considered as one of the poorest people in the world? These are the questions that we all must ask ourselves. And sometimes when you argue and say to yourself that the coup is not warranted, that there was no need for a coup because there was a democratic process in Niger, you, ha- you also need to ask yourself this. What have these democratically elected leaders done for the people in Niger? What have they done so far? to help the Nigerians get ahead, to make their lives better. What have they done? Because believe me, if they did things that were to the benefit of Nigerians, if they really built Niger to be a great country, we all must have heard of it by now. Even the Nigerians must have said it by now. But from all what we are gathering is that the country is nowhere to be found. The country is so poor that people can barely survive, that when Nigeria cut off power supply to Niger, the whole country was like in darkness. This is how bad things are in Niger. And we might not want this coup to happen. We might say that, well, having coups in Africa is not the right way to go. All of us will agree on that. But then, what can be done? What should we do? What do you propose we do? Or what do you suggest we do? Since schools are not the way to go, so we just let things be the way they are, someone has got to come in and set the record straight. Someone has got to come in and said, hey, hold on. Things are not going the way we expected. Things are not going the right way. These people do not get what they deserve. They deserve far more what they are getting. They deserve to be treated better. Just look at their lives. Just look at the way they are suffering. Don't you think they deserve more than this? Someone has to set something. Someone has to do something. And so even if we do not like the coups in Africa, the coups are a necessary evil. But let's complete the article. The country is also hosting thousands of refugees from neighboring countries such as Nigeria, Mali, and Burkina Faso. Wow. I didn't know Nigeria has um, refugees in Niger. The coup has added to the uncertainty and instability of the country. The international community including the United States, the United, the African Union, and the European Union, has urged the junta to respect human rights and to return power to civilians as soon as possible. Yeah. That's going to take some time to happen. Uh, I think that power should be returned to a civilian government. I think that uh, the military should be in the barrack, not interfere with the smooth running of the republic. That's what I think. But difficult moments call for difficult solutions. Niger was going down a very terrible path and something needs to be done. Something had to be done. So let's wait and see what these juntas in Niger will do to stabilize the country. What they will do to fix Niger. What they will do to make sure that they, the Niger is being put on a path to prosperity. But you guys out there, what is your take on this move by Niger to cut off military ties with their neighbor, Benin? Do you think that Benin, allowing ECOWAS to station troops in that country, betrays Niger? Share your thoughts and opinions with us in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, do not forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because little bit of good we, like the one you're doing just now, help us a lot. I'm sure we're grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. 
and like always, see you in the next one. <music>